Welcome back. Today, the moment of truth. Uh, this is part three of building our own uh, CNC. Thanks for watching again and thanks for coming back. And right now what we are going to do is to start testing the NEMA motors. Here is the power cord. Uh, we have uh, pl plugged and connected the DDCS controller. It has the stop, uh, emergency stop, and the power on, and voila. The funny thing is that my daughter was with me and she was so excited because it didn't blow up. <laughs> because there is always a risk, right, when you are doing electronics that you might burn it. So in this episode, we are going to go through how we were able to wire it and how we were able to um, configure the DTCS controller. Uh, I, as you notice, uh, when I connected it for first time, I did have an error on the reset. Uh, it was easy, kind of fixable, just by uh, disconnecting and connecting some of the stepper motors. And you'll see when I'm explaining some of the uh, connections, what, what did I did. So once that I plug it in, the other thing that I was noticing is that you can connect a keyboard and you can use the keyboard as well to be able to modify uh, or uh, move the, the axis. I'm trying to figure out, if you notice when I first connected them, they were pretty fast. Uh, so I needed to, to make sure. The other thing that I noticed is that um, the X axis was not working properly. So I was trying to hook the uh, aviator connector, connector to see if that was the problem. Maybe if it was a short or not. Uh, but yeah, the, the X was not working. But uh, the other one, this is the, the Z, as you can see, is the NEMA uh, 34, and the other two are uh, NEMA 23. One thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, one trick is to sometimes, whenever you buy some of the switches, uh, you're able to see the diagrams. Uh, Amazon, sometimes they uh, they put the diagrams, and you can see uh, what is going on. I was trying to figure out how to connect it. I have never connected these uh, type of switches, industrial switches. And it had a couple uh, letters there for the lines. Uh, I feel that it was kind of obvious, but uh, I just wanted to double check. Uh, this uh, support 40 amps uh, type of a switch. So once that I understood uh, how to connect it, I wanted to have a control box uh, with a connector. Those type of connectors are very helpful because um, in this case, I knew that I would have to connect and disconnect the uh, the box and the components that uh, tool there it was so helpful so I, I strongly recommend it for you guys to <laughs> to get one of those because uh, it makes your uh, cables uh, connections more uh, tidy more needy and uh, it allows you to to kind of screw them faster uh, in a way uh, the other thing that I'm that I noticed is that when I was looking in, in YouTube different videos on different controller boxes, I have noticed that a lot of people did not have uh, the ground. They they didn't wire ground, so uh, I, I think that is always good practice to uh, to wire the ground. Another thing that I noticed is that um, uh, when you are doing your your electronics, I'm trying to just uh, keep all of the the trash and the and the remainings. So I have that box to just put some of the um, some of the remainings of the cables and things like that. So that that helps me out. One of the things that you will notice is that the the line on the cable is red, and I was trying to color code it for the for the line, and the same for the for the black. Also, you notice on all of the drivers, we'll go on some of the details there, but I'm using the same colors for yellow to be able to connect them into the into the main, into the controller uh, connector for the DCS. So also, uh, it's across if uh, for ground, I'm using green, for uh, neutral, I'm using black. Uh, and then also when I'm connecting some of those things for uh, the different power supplies, those last two things were the power supplies. I highly recommend you to use this tool. Oh man, it was a, a life saver. Um, this tool uh, allow you to uh, to change the the cables, and basically uh, you can. It's, it's, it's the client tools, and it's a self-adjusting stripper. I have the 
traditional ones, but uh, in some of the cables, I was making some mistakes when I was trying to, to peel the cables. And this one is just so easy. Just basically you just pull it out. You don't have to adjust it and automatically self adjust. Doesn't matter if it's, if you notice here, I have five cables in one, right? For all of the different connectors. So I should just buy this one at the beginning of this project. So right now what you see here is I'm stripping out all of the different cables because I want to uh, connect all of the different drivers. And I will show you shortly um, a, a diagram uh, how things are connected. But right now, I just wanted to show you basically I'm cramping and stripping all of the cables to have them ready. Uh, I already measured them and, and I'm trying to use the same colors for each of the drivers. I'm spinning it up almost 20%. I know that it's super fast, but this video was getting too long. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the, the other thing that you can do is to buy these connectors uh, in bulk and once that you have it you will be able to to kind of uh, do it also I'm trying to check the continuity with the multimeter just to make sure that uh, because that was the first time that I started using that type of cable so one thing that it was very good it was the documentation for the DDCS uh, you can just get it from from their website uh, it is about seven inch screen and it has all of the different uh, buttons for the different axes within the screen so you don't have to plug a keyboard if you don't want it, want it. also it has the different um, uh, slots for uh, the mpg for the inputs and the outputs and uh, one di main difference between the ddcs versus the uh, previous generation is that it has this cable to be able to to kind of mount it in, in into your panel so uh, the document is very very well written uh, I was surprised uh, to be honest it was very straightforward it had all of the com for the communication uh, something interesting is that you need to add uh, two power supplies for the controller and you can see the a b a a x y and z uh, basically it's all of your axes this controller supports to have an extra one and they call it a so maybe if you have a lot or something like that you can do it in my case i i'm not using at the moment but maybe in the future uh, i should be able to to add one uh, but yeah th that's basically kind of a straightforward and yeah so uh, once that you are able to kind of get it uh, sometimes the uh, it's just easy to to kind of get the documentation from the from the vendor. Uh, sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. But in this case, I, I it was a pleasant surprise that the vendor had a, a very well documented configuration and and wiring. So after I read all of the documentation, then I start putting together the uh, the different things. These are the drivers. I already connected mine, but I wanted to show you and. Uh, and basically based on the diagram you can see the different uh, pull and drives and also the other connectors in previous videos I explained how to uh, identify the motors uh, you basically in the step motors you connect those two cables to see which ones are the pairs and then those connect to the controller so they are all of them they are well labeled and basically I try to use the same color for each of them and that's right now what I'm trying to connect between the uh, the connections, the Avirol connections to the driver, to the controller. And I was trying to, to figure out uh, because, ah oh man, it's a lot of cables, right? And, and sometimes it gets confusing. But to be honest, if you keep the, uh, the five cables within the same uh, cable as it comes from factory, it, it's a straightforward. So, and the other thing that I kind of like it is that uh, you can remove all of these connectors uh, like you saw me doing here and uh, you're able just to to kind of like uh, add them and remove them as unnecessary. Just make sure that you are tidying them very, very well because in couple instances, I, I thought that actually I, I tied it, it was inside, it was not loose. However, uh, it was not uh, a fully engaged. So I have to kind of double check continuity with the multimeter to see what was happening with the X axis that we saw in the beginning of the video. So 
Um, the other thing that it was very straightforward is to make sure that all of the cables are uh, following the same pattern, the same colors. So in that way there is no, no mistake. Uh, one of the things that I have noticed is um, a lot of uh, uh, pan panel uh, control panels, they, they're using multiple power supplies. Uh, in this panel, I'm using two 424 that they are in the center of the box. Uh, one, the, main, the, main, the big one, the one on the bottom, and the, and the one on the top that I'm trying to, to reduce it from 24 to, uh, I think that is 12 volts. And that one, it was for the fan. So uh, you just need to check your uh, amperage uh, to see if, uh, if your power supply will support it. Um, in this case, I, I still have one amp, but if I notice that I'm skipping some steps on the, on the CNC or it's, it's basically the motors are, are not operating the way that I wanted them, then probably I will add the other two power supplies. Another thing that I have noticed is that the, the cables were getting too in the way, so I'm, I need to rearrange them. I, I found that, um, I don't know the name of the of that, it's just, it just basically allows you to kind of have the cables very nitty, uh, very tidy. So uh, then I was just wrapping them up and uh, I also tried to find maybe a sticker and I, did, I was able to find um, a sticker to be able to glue them on the side as well. Uh, here, as you notice, uh, I noticed that I'm adding the ground. Uh, if not, I will forget. And the same, I'm following just uh, the color coded, like I mentioned it. So that way I'm, I'm double checking the, uh, the button. And that's basically one of the things that I noticed is that it, it was in the way. So uh, then I start putting just the straps and <laughs> to to help me out and also one of the things that uh that it was important is to to wire the emergency stop with the same circuit and that's a big uh debate that i have noticed right i prefer to actually do an emergency stop with the whole uh en energy so that's the reason why you see it on the on the hotline here uh, i'm i'm putting the connectors for the uh, for the thin rail which it will allow me to bridge between the different uh, power supplies. Also, I have the blocks uh, of different ones for neutral, hot, and then I can I can do all of that. So once that I have all of that, I have to put it back again. And that's basically, I have to do that multiple times. Uh, and that's the reason why I feel that if you're building a box, make sure that you can remove it uh, on and off uh, because Sometimes you have to add another component and it gets tricky. So um, in this case, uh, there were only a couple, couple uh, connectors that I needed to disconnect uh, once that it was there. But yeah, in this case, I'm trying to reconnect all of them uh, to be able to get the each of them. So I'm adjusting it and moving them around. Um, the other thing that happened there is that I, I don't know where I put the, the screws and it took a while for me to find them <laughs> but when i found them yeah i, I start placing them there um, but yeah in this in this case i wire already the emergency button the power button and right now i'm, I'm just trying to wire all of the hot wires uh for 24. in this case i'm using uh, uh, a white uh, uh, cable color uh, to for the 24 volts i did not want to mix the uh, different different ones. This one is the power supply to be able to connect the the fan. Uh, I have to reduce it because it's, it's basically the power that I got on the box is 24 volts and the, the fan it needed uh, 12 volts. So you might have to do that depending on the on the components that you're getting. Um, it was very cheap just to get a, a computer fan so in this case that's what I did. And that's that's kind of the component that I have to add again. Uh, maybe if I I would plan it a little bit earlier, <laughs> I will I will do all of that uh, beforehand. But here is I was just noticing that I needed it to to add certain things. The other thing that I needed to add it was uh, an extension for the DB9, and this one will be for the MPG. Uh, the MPG is the uh, it comes with the DDCS. 
and it allows you to move, to hunt, move the different axes by, by hand. And I'll, I'll show you uh, later on what I mean. But yeah, right now I'm again connecting everything back just to make sure that uh, everything is, is properly. And right now it's just connecting to the drivers, the power for neutral and um, and the and, and the hot wire. Uh, so right now we're just going through each of them. And uh, the other thing that we're gonna do after that uh, is basically connect all of them now to the to the power supply. So once that we have that, uh, then we can um, we can just connect it to the to the controller, and you just keep following the 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 structure and the cables as the documentation is is telling us. And one of the interesting things um, that one of the subscribers was was mentioning is like, hey, why why are you building everything right when you can just buy another uh, CNC? And and I think that is a it's a fair question, but uh, one of the reasons why I'm building it is because we can get a, a a better machine to be able to cut different different type of types of metal if you get one of those uh, cheap ones um, there's a lot of problems with them so but in this case that's that's the reason why uh, embark it into uh, building it so now you can see here that we have all of the different cables right uh, we have the ground we have the, the neutral and please don't forget to add some caps uh, because this is actually power coming in and maybe if you have it connected uh, you might actually <laughs> get shocked so it's always good practice to just put the covers things like that uh, you are you are using uh, if you're wearing these type of things once again they're they're almost like industrial type of equipment that uh, you can get hurt uh, so the the best thing sometimes is just to to follow the <laughs> some of the rules and regulations and in this case these uh, connector boxes they come with covers which is great uh, so uh, once that all of that is, is fully wired now we can start testing it uh, you also notice that I created two other other holes there because I wanted to create some limit switches and in another video I'll, I'll show you how to connect those but here it is this is the MPG we actually can select the axis and you have to press the button on the on the side uh, the green button if those if not doesn't move and you can configure each of those uh, sounds uh, to be able to move a uh, 0.001 so a thou which it was pretty awesome it also has um, an emergency stop there and i was able to to test them all basically we have the the x-axis the y-axis and the, and the z-axis That was very exciting when everything was working and uh, basically and I was also able to test the, the button it's kind of weird that uh, you have to pop it up but uh, once that you pop it up uh, and let me show you here you are able to see that the whole uh, control it says that you need to reset it and then manually you have to reset it with the uh, with the machine which is which until you push the button then you can engage it and then it goes away so that that's pretty cool uh but yeah uh, uh, once that uh all of that was wired you can hear that all of the different um access were working so thanks for watching uh